Let's talk about trigonometric ratios, sine, cosine, and tangent, and cosecant, secant, and cotangent. But first, let's review what we already know about right triangles. For example, could you figure out the length of AB? Well, yeah, since this is a right triangle, AB is the hypotenuse. It's the side that's across from the right angle. And I know the lengths of both of the legs. So I can use the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, or leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. So we can write this equation, 8 squared plus 11 squared equals ab squared, which would be 64 plus 121, which is 185. And there's not a perfect square root for 185, so just round it to one decimal place, and I get an answer of 13.6 feet. What about the measure of angle A? Could I figure that out as well? Well, yeah, since it's a right triangle, I can use the corollary to the triangle sum theorem to say that the sum of the two acute angles must be 90 degrees. You could have also just used the triangle sum theorem to say that 90 plus 54 plus the measure of angle A equals 180. You would get the same answer of 36 degrees either way you did it. We're going to need to know how to solve for side lengths using the Pythagorean theorem and solve for angle measures using the corollary to the triangle sum theorem, as well as some general vocabulary knowledge as well. So let's review what a hypotenuse and what legs are, and then we'll expand on that idea. Remember that the hypotenuse of a right triangle is always the longest side. It's the side that's across from the right angle. The other two sides are called legs. The legs are the sides that create the right angle. But what we're going to learn today is that the legs are going to have special names depending on which vertex you're focusing on. For example, if we're focusing on angle A in this diagram, leg B would be adjacent to angle A because leg B is one of the sides that creates angle A. The other side that creates angle A is C. C is called the hypotenuse. B would be adjacent, whereas A would be opposite. A is the side length that is across from angle A. Side A does not create angle A. It's on the other side of the triangle, and therefore we call it opposite. So before we actually learn anything about sine, cosine, and tangent, let's just practice identifying the opposite and the adjacent and the hypotenuse given a certain angle. You'll see this symbol right here quite frequently when you're dealing with trigonometry. It's the variable that we use to label an angle. It's the Greek letter theta, T-H-E-T-A, and you can really just think about it like X, but for angles. So if we're focusing on angle theta in this diagram, or angle M, which side is opposite, which side is adjacent, and which side is the hypotenuse? The side that is on the other side of the triangle from theta is called the opposite. The segment on the other side of the triangle from angle theta is LK. So LK would be the opposite side from angle M. Whereas side ML is adjacent to angle theta because it's one of these sides that create theta. The other side that creates theta is the hypotenuse, which is MK. You don't ever call the hypotenuse adjacent, even though you can make the argument that it is definitely adjacent to this angle because it creates that angle. The hypotenuse is special. It's the side that's across from the right angle, so we don't ever call the hypotenuse adjacent. The hypotenuse is always just the hypotenuse. Let's try another one. This time we're going to focus on angle S. That's the one that's labeled with a theta. So which side is opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse? The side that is opposite from theta is all the way down here, that's side TU. The side that is adjacent to theta is ST. Because it's right next to angle theta, it creates, it's one of the sides that creates angle S. The other side that creates angle S is the hypotenuse. That's the side that is across the triangle from the right angle. We call that SU. I'd like you to try this third example on your own. Pause the video and see if you can identify which sides are opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. Let's see how you did. In relationship to angle G, which is labeled with a theta, FH would be considered the opposite because it's on the other side of the triangle from theta. GH would be the adjacent side because it's attached to angle theta, it created angle theta. 
and FG would be the hypotenuse because it's across the right triangle from the right angle. So why do we care which sides are opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse? Well, because it allows us to set up each of our trigonometric ratios. A trigonometric ratio is just a fraction. It just compares two sides of a triangle. And we give each of the possible combinations of two sides a special name. There's sine, cosine, and tangent. Those are the three primary trigonometric ratios. And then there's also cosecant, secant, and cotangent. And for our purposes here in geometry, we're really just going to explore the fact that they exist and how to write the ratio. We're not really going to use it for much, but they do have a lot of applications if you decide to explore higher level mathematics. So what is sine, cosine, and tangent? Sine is the ratio of the opposite side and the hypotenuse. Cosine is the ratio of the adjacent side and the hypotenuse and tangent is the ratio of the opposite side and the adjacent side. So all that these fractions are is all of the various combinations of opposite and hypotenuse and adjacent in combination with cosecant, secant, and cotangent. These six fractions are the only way that you can compare two of the three sides of a triangle. You'll notice some similarities between each of these trigonometric ratios. Sine and cosecant are related to each other because they're inverses. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, and cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite. So it's the same sides, just in a different order. And it's the same idea with cosine and secant, and tangent and cotangent. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, but secant is the upside-down version of that, the reciprocal, hypotenuse over adjacent. And tangent is opposite over adjacent, but cotangent is adjacent over opposite. You'll notice that there is not a button on your calculator that says cosecant, secant, and cotangent. So if you ever need to calculate cosecant, secant, or cotangent, you'll use the fact that they're inverses or reciprocals of the primary trigonometric ratios. If you need to calculate the cosecant of an angle, you can just type in 1 divided by the sine of that angle. Secant would be 1 divided by cosine, and cotangent would be 1 divided by tangent. So how on earth are we supposed to memorize sine, cosine, and tangent as opposites and hypotenuse as adjacents? How am I ever supposed to remember which one is which? Well, that's what SOHCAHTOA is for. Students have been learning SOHCAHTOA since, I don't know, probably when my granddad went to school. It's a very old sing-songy acronym that we use to help us remember which things are which. So let's break it down. So, S-O-H, the S is for sine, and O and H are for opposite and hypotenuse, because sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So that's so. Ka, C-A-H, C is for cosine, A is adjacent, and H again is hypotenuse, because cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's ka. And then I have toa, T is for tangent, O is for opposite, and A is for adjacent, because tangent is opposite over adjacent. So if you ever can't remember which thing is which, sine, cosine, tangent, opposite, adjacent, hypotenuse, what is what, just use SOHCAHTOA. So let's try an example where we identify the sine, cosine, and tangent of a triangle based on a given angle. So in this case we're talking about angle I, that's the one that's labeled with a theta. So the first thing that we need to do is label each of the sides with opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. I always like to start with the hypotenuse because it's the easiest one to figure out. It's always just the side that is across the triangle from the right angle. The other two sides will be opposite and adjacent. Adjacent is the side that is right next to that angle, which is side JI for this triangle. Side JI and side IK the adjacent and the hypotenuse make the angle. And the opposite side is the side that doesn't make the angle. It's the side on the other side of the triangle, in this case, side JK. So if I want to write the sine of angle I, well, sine, that's so, S-O-H, O is opposite, H is hypotenuse, so sine is opposite over hypotenuse. The opposite side is JK, and the hypotenuse is IK. So the sine of this angle is JK over IK. Let's try cosine. Cosine, that's ka in SOHCAHTOA, 
Ka is C-A-H, A is for adjacent, H is for hypotenuse, so cosine must be adjacent over hypotenuse. The adjacent side is called IJ, and again the hypotenuse is IK. So the cosine of angle I is IJ over IK. And let's do the same thing for tangent. Tangent, that's TOA in SOHCAHTOA, so T-O-A, T is for tangent, O is for opposite, and A is for adjacent. So tangent must be opposite over adjacent. Opposite is JK, and adjacent is IJ. So the tangent of angle I would be JK over IJ. Let's try another one. Again, the first thing that we need to do if we're asked to figure out a sine or a cosine or a tangent is figure out which sides are opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. The hypotenuse for this triangle would be LN because it's across from the right angle. The adjacent side would be side LM because it's right next to the angle. And the opposite side would be NM because it's on the other side of the triangle from the angle. The sine of an angle is opposite over hypotenuse. The opposite side is NM. The hypotenuse is LN. So the sine of angle L is NM over LN. The cosine of an angle is adjacent over hypotenuse. The adjacent side is LM, and the hypotenuse again is LN. So the cosine of angle L is LM over LN. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. Opposite is NM, adjacent is LM, so that's the tangent of angle L. The next problem is for you to try on your own. Write the sine, cosine, and tangent of angle theta, angle Q, in this diagram. Pause the video and try it now. Let's see how you did. The hypotenuse is side PQ, the adjacent side is RQ, and the opposite side is PR. The sine of an angle is opposite over hypotenuse, which would be PR over PQ. The cosine of an angle is adjacent over hypotenuse, so the cosine of angle Q would be QR over PQ. And the tangent of an angle is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side, so for this that would be PR over RQ. Typically you won't see problems that really look like this though, because there was no numbers provided on the diagram. Typically you'll have some information provided to you. So let's try an example. Instead of writing the side's names, we'll write the side's lengths. But of course, the first thing you should do is identify which sides are opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is 17 because it's across from the right angle. It's also the longest of the three sides, and we know the hypotenuse is always the longest. The adjacent side is 8 because it's right there next to the angle. And 15 is the opposite because it's on the other side of the triangle. The sine of an angle is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. The opposite is 15. The hypotenuse is 17, so the sine of angle A is 15 seventeenths. The cosine of an angle is adjacent over hypotenuse. The adjacent side is 8. The hypotenuse is 17, so the cosine of angle A is 8 seventeenths. And the tangent of an angle is opposite over adjacent. The opposite side is 15. The adjacent side is 8, so the tangent of angle A is 15 eighths. Remember that cosecant, secant, and cotangent are related to sine, cosine, and tangent because they're the reciprocals of each other. So instead of actually looking at the diagram to figure out cosecant, secant, and cotangent, I'm just going to look at the answers I've already written down and flip them to create the reciprocals. The cosecant of angle A is the reciprocal of the sine of angle A, so the cosecant is 17 fifteenths. The secant of angle A is the reciprocal of the cosine of angle A, so the secant is 17 eighths. And the cotangent of angle A is the reciprocal of the tangent, so the cotangent would be 8 fifteenths. So each of these fractions are the six different possible ways to compare two of the three sides of this triangle. And these are the sine cosine tangent, cosecant secant, and cotangent for angle A. But we could do the same thing for angle B. Let's see what similarities we see. First thing I have to do is label as opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. Hypotenuse stays the same. The hypotenuse is always the hypotenuse. But the opposite side and the adjacent side will switch around depending on which angle you're talking about. So since we're talking about angle B this time, that makes 15 the adjacent and 8 the opposite. So for the sine of angle B, 
opposite over hypotenuse would be 8 over 17. The cosine, which is adjacent over hypotenuse, is 15 seventeenths. And the tangent is opposite over adjacent, so 8 fifteenths. The cosecant, secant, and cotangent are just the reciprocals of each of these three numbers, so I get these three answers. So let's compare the trigonometric ratios for angle A to the trigonometric ratios for angle B. Do you notice anything? Well, I see that the sine of angle A is equal to the cosine of angle B, and that the cosine of angle A is equal to the sine of angle B. And I see a similar relationship with the cosecants and the secants. I also see that the tangent of angle A is equal to the cotangent of angle B, and that the cotangent of angle A is equal to the tangent of angle B. It makes sense that there's a lot of commonalities between these lists of ratios, because like I said, these trigonometric ratios are just the six possible comparisons of two sides of the three sides of a triangle. So no matter which angle it is that you're talking about, there's really only a certain number of ways that you can compare 8 and 17 and 15. So of course some of the ratios from one angle are going to be equal to the ratios of the other angle. The common ratios that we focus on the most, though, are sine and cosine. The sine of one angle is equal to the cosine of the other. And the cosine of one angle is equal to the sine of the other. So let's take a look at an example where we just compare the sines and cosines of two different angles in a triangle. If I ask you for the sine of angle A, well here's angle A. If I need a sine, then I need the opposite and the hypotenuse. The side that's opposite from angle A is 5, and the hypotenuse is 13. So the sine of angle A is 5 thirteenths. If I need the cosine of angle A, then I need the adjacent, the adjacent side for angle A is 12, and I also need the hypotenuse, which again is 13. So the cosine of angle A would be 12 thirteenths. And according to what we just learned, I can just switch around these ratios for the sine and cosine of angle B. But let's verify that that's true. We're thinking that the sine of B should be 12 thirteenths, because that's what the cosine of A was, and we're thinking that the cosine of B should be 5 thirteenths because that's what the sine of A was. So let's double check. Here's angle B. If I need the sine, then I need the opposite over the hypotenuse. In relationship to angle B, 12 is opposite, and 13 is the hypotenuse. So yeah, I get 12 thirteenths. And for cosine, I need the adjacent. Adjacent to angle B is 5, and I need the hypotenuse, which again is 13. So yeah, I get 5 thirteenths. In our next example, we're going to compare the sine, cosine, and tangent of one triangle's angle A to another triangle's angle Y. The sine of angle A would be opposite over hypotenuse. The side that's opposite from angle A is 3, the hypotenuse is 5, so the sine of angle A is 3 fifths. The cosine of angle A is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, so that would be 4 fifths. And the tangent of angle A would be opposite over adjacent, so 3 fourths. Now let's do the same thing for angle Y in this bigger green triangle. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, the opposite side is 6, the hypotenuse is 10, so the sine of Y is 6 tenths. But that can be reduced to 3 fifths. The cosine of angle Y is adjacent over hypotenuse, which would be 8 over 10, and that's also reducible it reduces to 4 fifths. And the tangent of angle Y is the opposite over the adjacent, which would be 6 eighths, and that reduces to 3 fourths. Do you notice the similarities between the sine, cosine, and tangent of angle A versus angle Y? They're all the same thing. But how's that possible? They were two different triangles. Why would I have the same ratios for sine, cosine, and tangent if I had different triangles? Well, that's actually what right triangle trigonometry is based on. It's based on the idea of right triangle similarity. If you know that a triangle is right, and you know one of its acute angle measures, you can find the ratio of its side lengths, the sine or the cotangent or whatever. So when you're typing sine or cosine or tangent into a calculator followed by a number, you're asking it to calculate the ratio of the side lengths for a right triangle that has that angle measure. We've already learned some of these, actually. We learned about 30, 60, 90 triangles and 45, 45, 90 triangles in a previous lesson. And here I see a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Well, if I type cosine of 30 into my calculator, it's going to tell you square root of 3 over 2. 
It might tell you a decimal approximation if you don't have a good enough calculator. And those numbers should look kind of familiar based on what we learned about special right triangles. For 30, 60, 90 triangles, we learned that the short leg is 1, the long leg is the square root of 3, and the hypotenuse is 2. All 30, 60, 90 triangles come in this ratio for their side lengths. And if I ask you for the cosine of 30 degrees, the cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is the square root of 3 over 2. Let's see that for a 45, 45, 90 triangle. If you type tangent of 45 into the calculator, it's going to tell you 1. Where is that coming from? Well, remember that the side lengths of a 45, 45, 90 triangle come in the ratio of 1, 1, square root of 2. So if I ask you for the tangent, that's the opposite over the adjacent. And both of those are a 1, so you get 1 over 1, which is just 1. The reason that we learned about those special right triangles is because they give you these exact answers. If it's a 45, 45, 90 triangle, or if it's a 30, 60, 90 triangle, you can get exact side lengths from the trigonometric ratios. But for everything else, you're going to have to do a decimal approximation. So let's calculate each of these trigonometric ratios using a calculator. Now it's really important that you make sure that your calculator is in degree mode, not in radian mode. A lot of calculators, especially the TI-84s, default to being in radian mode, and we don't want radians. We want degrees. So making sure that your calculator is in degree mode, type in sine of 46. And it's going to give you a crazy decimal. Typically in trigonometry, we round to four decimal points. So we would round this to 0.7193. Cosine of 13 would be 0.9744. And type in tangent of 50, and we get 1.1918. What these numbers are telling you is that those side lengths, the opposites and the adjacents and the hypotenuses, whichever ones you're talking about for sine, cosine, or tangent, come in the ratio of that number. It's a decimal approximation of a fraction. Now remember that there is not a cosecant, secant, or cotangent button on your calculator. So if you want to type in cosecant of 78, you have to use the fact that cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So instead, you can type in 1 over sine of 78 and get an answer of 1.0223. Secant and cosine go together, so I will use 1 over cosine of 22 to calculate the secant of 22, and I get an answer of 1.0785. Cotangent and tangent go together, so I can use 1 over tangent of 37 to calculate the cotangent of 37, which is 1.3270. And that's the basics of what you need to know about trigonometric ratios. In the next part of this lesson, we're going to learn how to use trigonometric ratios to calculate missing side lengths and angle measures in right triangles.